when I was in the third grade, I suffered from a rare condition that I almost never recovered from. The official name of it is long and complicated, so most people now just simply refer to it as middle part. <laughs> <laughs> For over two years, I willingly did that to my own head. <laughs> and now I don't show you this to scare you or to permanently haunt your dreams, but instead to prove to you that if that person can one day become a leader, then my word, literally anyone can do it. But I have to say, we are not making it easy. In fact, I think most would agree that the thought of becoming a leader is confusing and just downright intimidating, like an Ikea dresser. Why even bother? <laughs> because on one hand, we have this amazing new idea of a leader, one that's vulnerable and compassionate. Yet we're still teaching people that the functional duties of a manager, things like strategic visions or delegating, have anything to do with being a good leader. Which is why right now, if I'm someone new to leadership and I have that tiny leadership flame that I'm secretly guarding, there is a giant void between where I am and the leader I want to become. You see, at work, I manage a team of engineers, and if we're being honest, I would tell every one of them watching this, do not join a leadership development program. You are wasting your time, and we're wasting our money trying to teach you because we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> and I can prove it. Go ask a recent graduate of that program this simple question. What is leadership? I did. Last year, to an incredibly bright engineer who had just emerged after three years, certificate in hand, no answer. Go ask someone teaching that program. I bet you you'll get no answer. I even asked other managers from different companies. On the spot, I got no answer. And if you're feeling up to it, ask yourself right now, probably no answer. Now, this really is the definition of insanity, teaching the same thing over and over again in hopes of a different result. I mean, can you imagine if you hired a carpenter and when they showed up at your door, they couldn't answer, what is carpentry? You would fire them, and rightfully so. We can't have chairs that look like this. <laughs> and then if that same carpenter was teaching a class on it and you showed up and saw this, you'd go, yeah, looks about right. And then those people teach more people, and eventually, there's just nowhere to sit. <laughs> and it's funny because this nightmare universe would be completely unacceptable. And yet when it comes to leadership, meh, we kind of let it slide. Because one of them's bound to figure it out eventually, right? Well, that is just not good enough anymore. So I'm here today because I'm frustrated. I'm upset at how complicated we've made leadership. So my goal is simple. At the end of this talk, you're going to think to yourself, I could do that. And you'll be right, because you can, because anyone can. And here's how. I'm gonna share with you the best kept secret I know about leadership, what it actually is. I'm not gonna compare it to something else. I'm not gonna list the traits of great leaders, and I'm not gonna make up yet another leadership law for us all to remember. Nope, I'm gonna show you at its core what it really is. And then with this as your foundation, you can actually go out and become that amazing modern leader you read and hear so much about. Because I'm sorry, I can't stand by and watch us turn our next Abraham Lincoln or Maya Angelou into a manager, not a leader. But I have to say, even with how poorly we teach it, we all know there are some incredible leaders out there. So I'd like you to picture one in your head right now. Someone that really sticks out to you, someone you absolutely consider to be a leader. Now I'm curious, what was their official title? Manager? English teacher? Head coach? You know what I'm certain their title wasn't? Leader. One word, just leader. Try your hardest right now. You cannot go online and apply to be simply a leader. It doesn't exist. You could find leader of blank, 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 lead, but just leader, that word you thought of, it's not going to happen. And yet you know this person was one. 
So clearly being a leader is something separate, something completely independent from your occupation or the functional duties that define your job. Well, then it's got to be something you can acquire, something you can earn. But then how would you describe to someone else how to become one? Well, call me old-fashioned, but I think a great place to start would be with the basics. And I think we'd all agree what do leaders have? Followers. And follow is an interesting word because it really is the only one like it. See, if I go to my car right now and you go where I go because you want to be where I am for whatever reason, that's called creepy. (laughs) And following. You're choosing to go where I am. You're following me. I'm certainly not forcing you to do that. You're not obeying someone's command. No, this was something you voluntarily did. But then why would someone choose to follow someone else, to follow a leader? Well, why do people choose to do anything ever? I know for me, when I'm hungry, I eat. Back in the day, though, I'm hungry, I hunt. Back in the day, I'm really hungry, and I realize Caveman Todd is a very good hunter. So I start paying special attention to what Todd does. I start sharpening my spears like Todd. I download the same true crime podcast as Todd. (laughs) But most importantly, I start listening to what Todd says, and I start going where Todd goes. Because I have a basic need that must be met, and I know he can help me with it. And we all share these level one needs, things like Food, water, shelter, these are the physical must-haves we need in order to stay alive. But it goes beyond that. Things like a sense of belonging, feeling appreciated, being accepted. These two live in level one for us because we have to have these. And as so many of us have sadly witnessed, these two are life and death for us. So we'll do whatever it takes to make sure these are met. And whether we realize it or not, we all search out ways and people that we think can help. And once those are met, and only after they're met, do we fully allow ourselves into level two. Now, level two, these are our wants, our desires. We can live without these, but we want these. Things like success or fame or just a general enjoyment of life all live in level two, but we can only stay in level two if our level one needs are being met. If you're in the kitchen and you cut yourself opening a hot pocket, questionable choice, (laughs) you wouldn't ignore it and go bleed out while you watch Netflix. No, you would address the cut in your hand and then go on with your day. The opposite order would be insane, but it's not always that extreme. Sometimes we do switch the order. Put wants before needs, success before our own well-being. But we can only sustain that for so long. Eventually, the thankless 14-hour workdays catch up to you. You miss enough birthdays, you lose enough hair, and you feel so unappreciated that you just can't be successful anymore. So you leave. You find someone else, somewhere else, where you can be the best version of you. So everything we do and every decision we make can be boiled down into satisfying either levels one or two. And eventually, they always happen in that order. So I know what you might be saying to yourself. Okay, Joe, that's great. We're all these beautifully complicated organisms just trying to survive and succeed in life. But what's that mean for me? I'm a program manager and I got deadlines. Or... I'm a CEO and I've got a bottom line I need to worry about. And to you, I would say, yes. Absolutely, I agree. We're on the same exact page. Same, same. The single goal of a leader is their team's success. Period. No matter how that team, organization, connected group of individuals is constructed, and no matter how large it is, two, 2,000, 330 million, All we as leaders want is for our teams to succeed. That's it. So now this is where we're going to take a big step together. I want you to think back to that leader of yours from earlier. 
I can actually guarantee one more thing about them. Whether they realized it or not, they understood and practiced the theory of leader relativity. This is the basic logic flow that governs every leader there's ever been. You name me a great leader, they lived by it. Except most just have no idea they're even doing it. See, leaders want their teams to succeed. Teams are made of people. When people succeed, teams succeed. Ah, start from the other end. I'm a person, and I want to succeed. But before I can get to level two, I have to have my level one needs met because I am not capable of succeeding until that happens. So if I don't think you're helping me do that, then I'll never choose to follow you. I'll never consider you a leader. In other words, I'm going to need you to care not only about my success, but I need you to care about me, period, like as a person. And I don't care what words come after your name on LinkedIn. I don't care how many stock options you got last year. And I don't even care how much power you have on our team. You cannot make me choose to follow you. That's a decision I have to make. You have to earn the leader role from me. But once you do, once you get me to realize that you care about my levels one and two, my needs and my wants, because you understand that our success depends on my success as a human, then this is what we're left with. This is the best kept secret I know. This is leadership. Someone following someone else. This dynamic, that arrow. But I have to warn you, that's all it is. It's just one person following another person. So just because Laura considers me a leader, because I've earned that with Laura, doesn't mean Emily will. Doesn't mean Ryan will, or Josh, or Megan. These arrows, non-transferable. You have to build them with every person on your team. And there's a lot of ways you can do that, by the way. There's no set of rules or anything mystical about it. All you have to do to build that arrow is get someone to have this thought. I know you care about me. Because once you do that, we want to follow you. We know you'll help us. So all those things that great leaders do, inspiring, empowering, motivating, those are just ways of expressing, hey, I care, and this is me doing something about it hey, I know you've had a rough week. If you need anything at all, just let me know. Boom, arrow. I love your goals, but you can aim higher. Don't sell yourself short. Boom, arrow. There's nothing embarrassing about taking a mental health day. We'll see you back on Wednesday. Boom, arrow. And here's the best part of all. You can do this without even knowing someone, without ever having a conversation. We don't know each other, but you can feel how much I love this subject. And if that sparks something inside of you, arrow. But if you aren't doing that, though, every day, helping someone with their levels one and two, then this arrow disappears. Like MySpace, gone. <laughs> you see, functional titles are static. Things like manager, director, vice president. And like late night tattoos, they ain't coming off. For better or worse on your team, these are yours. But the roles on a team... Those are something different. These are how people see you. They're things you become. You can earn these, but they're only lent to you because if the people on your team no longer see you in that way, then you no longer occupy that role. So to all my wishful thinkers out there, I love you, I do, but you're not leaders. You actually have to go out and actively build that era with everyone around you all the time because what you did for me three weeks ago is great and I appreciate it, I do. But I'm hungry today. I'm hungry right now. And I will only follow someone that I think can help. So if you can go out and bridge that gap between team success and individual success by truly caring about the people around you and going out of your way to help them every day, well, then you are on your way to becoming an incredible leader. And just like that, you're ready. You now have the foundational secret to leadership and with it this exciting new ability to actually go out and become that amazing modern leader you read and hear so much about. But with great power comes great responsibility. You see, I poured my soul out for you today and now I'm asking you to go do the same with someone else. 
someone that's new to leadership, someone that's secretly guarding their own tiny leadership flame and is terrified at how complicated it all seems. Because if you take anything away from my talk today, I hope it's this. Don't be scared of leadership. It's just someone following someone else. Functional duties or the power a person has have no impact on the type of leader they are, or more importantly, the type of leader you can become. And so as you go out and grow into the amazing leader you were meant to be, always remember, people will walk through fire to follow you if they know you truly care about them. That's what leadership is. That's who we need you to be. Thank you. Thank you.